Good morning, everybody. I wanted to let everybody know about a program that the USDA offers. It's called EQIP, E-Q-I-P, and it's the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. It's a voluntary um, conservation program that provides financial and technical assistance to agricultural producers and non-industrial forest managers. And it's basically a program for farmers, landowners to help maintain their properties um, in a more conservation-minded state. What they do is they provide financial and technical assistance for projects that you've got on your, your farm. Um, they, they help you with cover crops, forest stand improvements, prescribed grazing, irrigation, and the, um, like I said, it's, it's up to 90% of those projects uh, that they'll, they'll help you with financially. So when you apply for the program, you just go on to USDA Equip, just Google that. The application's very simple. It's just uh, basically name, address, phone number, email. Obviously there's a little bit more, but I mean, it's a super, super simple application. A USDA rep will contact you and they typically, at my farm, they came out on, um, I think they contacted me January the 2nd and they came out the first week of January and they went around my farm with me. There was two representatives and they asked me what I wanted to do. And I told him, I said, I want to do some fencing. I want to do some, um, I want to work in the back of my property so that I can hay back there. I want to irrigate some places. Um, and you know, some of the things they said, yes, we can help you with. And some of the things they said, no, we can't help you with. So um, in cover crops, uh, that's one of their first categories. It's, uh, it's for grass, small grains, legumes, uh, and they do that for seasonal protection and soil improvements. Your forest stand improvement, that's to uh, improve and sustain your forest health, reduce pest damage and moisture stress, initiate forest stand regeneration, and uh, prescribe burns, pollinator habitat, and restore national, natural plant communities. The third one is uh, prescribed grazing, and that's to help with soil erosion, watershed functions, overseeding, fertilization, soil testings, and uh, herbicides. And then your last one is uh, irrigation, and that's to help for irrigation for the animals and for plant growth. They came out and they told me that they could help with uh, stuff that I didn't even know about. The fencing was one. They, they said that we can help you with cross fencing. Your, your perimeter fencing has to be in place first, but we can help you with cross fencing so that you can do rotational grazing. So it'll allow your pastures to rest while the animals are grazing on them um, or while they're not grazing on them rather. Uh, we can help you with um, high stress, uh, I'm sorry, um, high traffic areas. So where your animals congregate around a gate or around a watering hole, the animals typically congregate at the water or at the gate. Um, so anyway, they came out, like I said, on the first week of January, we went out looked around at everything. They went back to their office. They did a lot of paperwork. They do a lot more than you have to do. Your application process is super simple. They've got to do 25 times the paperwork that you do. Um, and then uh, it was submitted the third week of February, I believe. And you don't have to provide any tax documents, any financial paperwork, any pay stubs, nothing. It's just super basic. Like I said, name, address, phone number, email. And um, it's, it's very, it's super elementary. But um, the, in March, the third week of March of this year, about a month after I applied for it, five weeks after I applied for it, they let me know that I got approved for $7,900. So that's, that's unbelievable that they're gonna give me $7,900 to go towards projects on my farm that I don't have to come out of pocket with. And this is a USDA program that the government 
allots every state a block of money and then the state allocates counties in their state a block of money and then how many ever applicants the money doesn't go to all the applicants they my county told me that they only funded about 50 percent of the applicants so um i it just happened to fall into that 50 percent so um you can apply for it every single year and i guess if you get awarded it last year you're not going to get it this year or you're not going to rank very high they rank you um based on different things and i guess because i'd never been awarded any money and a lot of these guys around here are veteran farmers that they uh they probably applied for it numerous times and gotten it and so they went to the bottom of the list but anyway i'm going to take you around and show you after that let me back up after they came out they sent a forester out here forester came out and went through my woods i got four acres of woods and he went through my woods to look at everything and and uh tell me what he thought we should do and then he submitted his plan to usda and um so i, I got money for forestry stuff too so i'm going to take you around and show you everything that uh that they approved me to do so the first thing they approved me for was pasture maintenance out here in the back and over here in the front where the animals are that's going to allow me to take soil samples over to the university of georgia extension office and have them tested pay for the herbicide to spray on the fields pray for the fertilization and for the overseeding if that needs to be done second thing they approved me for was forestry stand maintenance and you see the mature forest is over there, but about 20 feet out, all of this undergrowth is growing and new trees and that type of stuff. So they're gonna bring a forestry mulcher in, a bobcat with a mulcher out on the front of it. And they're gonna go all the way around the perimeter of the woods, all the way around and, and mulch all this stuff up back to the mature forest. I've already started cutting some of the branches you see because he wanted me to trim the branches and get them down on the ground so that the mulcher could mulch them up because those branches you see right there i haven't cut those they reach out and they are covering up the ground and they want the sun to be able to get to the ground so they want me to trim all these limbs but they're going to go in and mulch all this all the way around these skepanongs right here, wild grapes, I've, uh, I was able to salvage these and get these growing on a trellis here. They want me to put a pollinator habitat right here on the fence line. Um, they will provide all of the plants. I just gotta build a box to plant them in so that we can get uh, the butterflies and the bees in here to pollinate not only that, but everything else around. There's just not a, enough pollinator habitat and they really like it when they're, when you help the pollinators, you know, give them something to pollinate with. The next thing is, is they are gonna provide me with some pasture fencing, some uh, um, cross fencing. So that cross fencing will separate these paddocks out i've already got it cross fenced into three paddocks out here but um they would like it to be cross fenced a little bit more so that it just allows these pastures to rest now this pasture has already been sprayed i've already sprayed it with grazon i know you guys just love to hate on grazon but um this hay isn't going anywhere this grass isn't going anywhere the compost isn't going anywhere. The manure is not going anywhere. Everything is staying here on this farm. But I sprayed this last week and you can already see how much the weeds are dying. This is a high traffic area right here that they're referring to. They've identified three half high traffic areas. You got a gate right there, a gate right there. The water's right here. This was their suggestion to put half of the water on either side of the fence. 
but what they want now or what they're gonna pay for is for plastic to be laid out here and it will be, it'll go 20 feet from here, 20 feet over, and it'll go 20 feet out, and it'll be a total of 40 feet long because 20 feet will be over here on this side. So 20, 20 for 40, and then 20 feet out. And that'll be a plastic laid down on the ground and then crush and run on top of that. And then when the animals are stepping on it in wet weather, they'll be stepping on dry crush and run rather than this being mud and getting all in their hooves and their feet and keeping their feet wet. So they've identified, like I said, three areas where they've approved me to do high traffic areas. They want me to trench from here at the city water. They want me to trench over to the barn and down the driveway. And I've told you all of this before, but the reason I haven't done it is because I was waiting on the equip money to see if I got approved. And since I did, that will finally happen. There's other things that equip pays for, but those are the only things that I qualified for. If you've got like cattle that are drinking out of a, a natural pond or something like that, and they're urinating and manuring, and that's getting into the natural water sources, They've got money for, you know, setting up some way to keep that clean. They've got um, money for structures. If you've uh, got a cattle operation, you got a milking operation, um, putting up some type of buildings where they can get underneath it and be in the shade to be milked. And there's just different types of things that they have money for. But these were the only things that I was qualified for. And... When they came out in January and looked at everything, they wrote down extensive notes and drawings and photographs, and they went back and they put together a formula how much it was gonna cost to do those projects, and they came up with a $7,900 approval. So the way it works is you can hire somebody to do all of the work for you, but your money's only gonna go so far. So most of the time you're your folks are pretty resourceful and do a lot of work on their own, which is what I do. And so I'm doing all this work on my own. As you know, I've done everything else on my own. The only thing I can't do is the forestry mulching. And so the forester is going to bring that mulcher in here and do that for me. And hopefully that $7,900 will get everything done that I need to get done. They're not going to pay for the horse run-in shelters. I still need to do three of those. But uh, I'm going to be able to trench and get all their water in and all that. So it's, it's going to help immensely. It's, uh, it's huge. And uh, it's money that's out there that's available. Um, you don't have to give it back. You don't have to pay it back. And it's, it's a neat incentive program, voluntarily conservation program. So if you are interested in something like that, just look up USDA Equip. And you can read all about it right there. So I hope that helped you and gave you a couple ideas. And I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.